Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 894. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 890 to 895, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to see how to extract records between two dates, filter or a dynamic formula. Now, filter is the easy way, and if it's static data, that's the way to go. If you have data that's going to change or you're going to add records and you want your formulas to automatically update, then formulas are the way to go. Now filter, field names at the top, records in rows, blanks all the way around. We can just invoke the filter. Control Shift L, that's a toggle, or Alt, this is an earlier version you used, Alt D F F. I like data, filter, filter. We come up here, date between, I'm going to type in the early date, 4 slash 1 slash 2012 and then 4 slash 30 slash 2012. All right, and so once we filter, we can simply copy and paste. Control C and then Control V. Now filter, you'd never have stuff over to the side because it's literally hiding, but for the video, I have them right compacting next to each other. Alt DFF is a toggle. Now formulas. Um, first, we want to count how many records meet these two criteria. And there really are two criteria. And the heart of this is we have to go through each one of these cells in the date column and ask two questions. Are you greater than or equal to the 1st of April? And are you less than or equal to? If that's true, then we want to extract the record. Now, you'll see that there are four trues here. So the problem with extracting records is it, it's a kind of lookup, right? We're looking up dates with two criteria and extracting it. But since there's multiple items we're returning, you know, we have to do an array formula. Now counting. In 2003 and earlier, you had to do two count ifs. And you can download this workbook and look at that one. In 2007 and 10, we're lucky we have count ifs with an s. You have to list the criteria range, comma, and then the criteria. And the criteria is great, uh, double quotes, greater than or equal to n double quotes, and the ampersand, that's the join symbol. We're going to join it with this date. That says anything greater than or equal to our lower date. Now, we do want to construct it with the comparative operator and double quotes, join it with there, because that number needs to be in the cell. You can't put the comparative operator in the cell, because we're going to use that number down in our formula. Comma, criteria range 2, we list the date again comma, and then less than or equal to the upper. And that's it for 2007 and 10. And it will give us 4. Now our extracting formula, we're going to use a lookup function. Index equals index. Now I'm going to extract 1, 2, 3 columns. So I'm going to highlight the first one and lock it with the F4 key only on the row reference. So as we copy down, it's locked. But when you move it over, those dancing ants move over to the region. Comma. The row number is the hard part in a formula like this. Because what do we have with two criteria? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. So the index needs, in this row, it needs row 3, mean relative position of this data set. When it's down to the next cell, it needs 4, then 5, then 6, and then nothing below. So because we're going to have multiple row numbers, we have to use the small function. The small, this array will give it all the correct row numbers. And then the k, that's as we copy down, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, and it will extract from the array the correct row number. Now, we have two criteria, so we have to use the if twice. And we have to look at the whole column, f4. Anytime that is greater than or equal to this. Now, notice this is. Uh, a direct comparative operation on an array of values. There's two things. One is that's what's going to cause us to, um, that makes this an array form, though, which means we're going to have to enter it with Control Shift Enter. And no double quotes, uh, much different than up here. We compare the criteria directly to the range. Now, that's the first logical test. But guess what? We comma and the value of true. Well, we have another logical test. We have to do an if and ask another question. You know, I forgot to lock this, F4, because we're copying this formula. Now this one, we have to directly compare less than or equal to the upper F4. All right, 
two logical tests. If both of them are true, then what do we want to throw into the small? Well, the small is ultimately going to deliver index row numbers, so we have to put all the row numbers. Now I'm going to type the row function and highlight row 4 to 12. F4, close parentheses. Now that won't work, because we need relative positions in the data set, really, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to subtract from the row, the row of that, the very first row in the data set, F4. Now that's not going to work either, because 4 minus 4 is 0, so I have to add 1 back in. Now this little construction is very robust, because if you insert row, col rows or columns, or move the data set, it'll always give you the correct relative positions, which are row numbers for our data set. All right, that's the value if true. We don't need these falses, so we close parentheses once and twice. We're down to the K. If we highlight this and hit the F9 key, boom, there are our row numbers. We need to extract them as we copy down. And that's where the K comes in. Comma, we use the rows functions. I'm sitting in E7, so I say, hey, how many rows are between E dollar sign 7 and E7? Well, 7 to 7 right now is 1, but because that's not locked and that is, as we copy it down, it'll give us the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, which is exactly what small needs. Close parentheses on the K. This whole small just delivers one row number at a time, F9. 3, that's exactly the first one. And when we copy the formula this way, it'll be 3, 3, 3. But when it goes down to the next row, it's 4, 4, 4. Control Z. That's the row number. We close parentheses. We use the keystrokes Control Shift and Enter. Now, Control Shift Enter is us telling Excel we're doing an array formula. Those curly brackets are Excel saying, hey, I understood you. That is an array formula. Copy it over. I'm immediately going to point to the Smart tag and say Fill without formatting, and then drag it down. All right, so do we get our right records? We sure did. We need to turn this error off. In 2007, we can use if error. In 2003 and earlier, you had to do this construction, if. And I'm going to take this rows. Oh, yeah, right. When we get past row 4, then we want to see nothing, right? So I'm going to say if for a logical test. Any times the number incrementer is greater than our 4. F4. Then that's the logical test. Then comma, show me nothing, double quote. Otherwise, then the value of false is that big index small. Control Shift Enter, copy it over, smart tag it, and then double click and send it down. Wow, that is a great formula. Let's test it. Let's change it to 3. And sure enough, it looks like it's working. So extracting records between dates. A couple other things down here. We definitely want to make it dynamic and test it and see if it works. Um, but down here, this is a great substitute for small. Now notice up there we did the if function. This if function argument right here, no matter how hard you try, we, did, we put more than one true or false in there. It's going to require Control Shift Enter. But the aggregate, it's a substitute for the small. So in 2010, you can download this and look at this for me here. Just search YouTube for aggregate extract records. I have a bunch of videos how to use this instead of small in 2010. Now let's convert this to a table so it's dynamic. And then as we add new records, this will update. So in 2007, you use Control L. In 2010, 7 and 10 use Control T. This converts it to a table, which will make all of our formulas looking at the ranges. Those ranges will be dynamic. So now watch this. First off, let's change this date to 4 slash 2. Oh, I'm sorry. We have our criteria. Let's do this. So I'm going to change this to um, just to, we're checking if the int internally it will update. So 401, and sure enough, it does. Control Z. Now let's check. We can add new records by coming to the end and hitting Tab. Or we can simply, at the bottom, type a new record. Uh, so we have 4, so I'm going to type 4 slash 15. Ooh, tax date, 2012. Tab. And sure enough, it shows up there. Let's say Midwest and uh, 43. So that is a dynamic way to have a formula to extract records between two dates. We saw a bunch of formulas 
and even some filter. All right, see you next video.